All your children, mother, call you. Knowing not it's you they call. Some through mists of their unknowing, bruised and hurting when they fall. Turn away, but who can leave you? You, the mother of us all. Were you, with murderous intent, thrust into a fiery furnace, one thought of one saving power would turn the flames into water. You drift upon the sea, threatened be drowned. One thought of one saving power despair. Quan Yin is the most important and best loved deity in the Chinese world. She is the living expression of compassion, whose gentle face and elegant figure form the center of devotion in most Chinese homes and workplaces. Yet she is barely known in the West. This is the legend of Quan Yin's life on earth as the princess Miao Sen of the kingdom of Sing Lin. From the beginning of creation, everything had meaning. The lucky day brings everything fruiting to ripeness. Then revelation comes, and don't take it too lightly. The pure-hearted being will be graced by the divine one. A strong lineage needs sons. And soon I will have many sons. I will have a great lineage. Lung Shu, hand me the crown. This crown I have sought for so long is finally mine. And you have gone to great lengths to get it, my lord. Of course I have. This kingdom didn't just fall into my lap. I won it through strategy and cunning. A great ruler must be ready to take action. And he took it so bravely, my lord, and so skillfully, too. It is a shame that so many men had to die. Some were only boys. Ah, Yen Su, I'm sure in your imaginary ideal world, no one ever dies for the sake of a great cause. But here, on this imperfect earth, sacrifices sometimes need to be made. It is the difference between theory and practice. That is what makes you a philosopher, and me a king. But my lord, surely you must wait for the coronation ceremony. That will come in time. All hail King Miao! All, All hail King Miao! There is a treasury full of 
table of jade and jewels. It is in you. Don't go searching far from home for it. It is here. Or you're like the man with a lantern looking for light. And can't you see what a total waste of time that is? control these matters. What can we do? Oh, your highness, the queen is expecting. What wonderful news. You should summon the royal priests to make offerings to the gods. Surely they will bless you with a son. A wise idea, Lung Chu. Pao Te, we have just been discussing our firstborn child. I will have a royal priest make offerings to the heavens so that we will have a son. Oh, my lord, at last our kingdom will have an heir. A wise one's way of life is relaxed and spacious. Pause here and breathe. Take time to drink your tea. It is pointless. Wear yourself up with what you're doing. You can be certain then that no disease will be drawn to you. I have a love who's far away, far away, far away. I have a love who's far away, farther away than the stars. What a fantastic ceremony, Your Majesty. It is twice as large as the one two years ago. Surely the heavens will make your next child a boy. Yes, surely they will. That will be all. Good night, my queen. Good night, my queen. We must have a son this time. I love my daughter, but our kingdom needs an heir. Oh, master of heaven, hear this cry of your child, Kaute. Please bless me that my child be a boy. Waiting for words to come from the moonlit sky, suddenly dark clouds drift across like chilling smoke. But don't let your heart be darkened like them. The moment always passes and gladness will return. Have not! 
throne. For this reason, they will not grant you a son. What? That's impossible! Guards! Drag this liar out of my kingdom before I kill him! Don't listen to that old man, sire. We all know he is crazy. Besides, since your first two children were girls, the third one has to be a boy. Yes, it has to be. <coughs> On the eastern edge, the moon rises so full of grace, and although it is hidden, out of sight, it still is. It can be either full or it can be waned. But it goes on its way. Wild mouths will always curse, and their words are not.
Sun, Yao Sun. small price to pay for the life of a cicada. I'm ready. I'm ready to be, no? Yen, Yin, you've come for your lessons and already you are arguing. What is it about this time? What do you think, Stan? A true teacher recognizes his limitations. Indeed. You two would do well to learn from your sister. <laughs> person's age and shouldn't. You feel the same as I do. Let's put our thoughts together. and vegetables. I don't understand how you can eat so simply. Always rice and vegetables. And your parents have given you all these rich bouquets, princess, yet you always wear the same frock. Riches and fortune will disappear. Even the best clothes will wear out and become rags. What are these temporary pleasures compared to the joy I feel in my heart? I am nurturing my soul rather than decorating this body which will one day be rotting. Rotting? Ugh, that's a bit extreme, isn't it, princess? I know you meditate all the time. I've tried it. I got bored after five minutes. I don't see how you can meditate for hours. Why do you live this way, princess? It certainly won't help you find a rich and powerful husband. Tyrants and dictators fall because they seek only riches and power. If you spend your life pushing, shoving, and grabbing, then you are no better than a criminal. If you aspire to fame and fortune, how can you free your spirit from the earthly realm? I seek the joy of freedom. Our princess, 
She truly has the heart of the Buddha. Go and live in a copper mine underground with the birds. Be in harmony with yourself and all the other paths. Everyone goes their own way and tries as best they can, but no one can cover the whole of heaven and earth's expanse. Majesty, you stand to gain three sons-in-law. Oh yes, Your Highness. This will give you a choice of three young men to take over your kingdom. It is true, my husband. Hmm. Summon the princesses. Yes, my lord. If they each marry a prince, then I will have the opportunity to form three powerful alliances. You are right, Lung Shu. My daughters, the time has come to consider your marriages. You must all have desirable husbands. Eventually, I will choose one of them as my successor. Yet, as the eldest, you will be the first to marry. Yes, Father King. You, as the second daughter, your marriage will be next. Of course, Father King. And Sam. Your marriage will be last. Well, son, what do you say? Father, king, riches and fame are not eternal. Glory and magnificence are mere bubbles, illusions. I choose not to marry. I wish to become a nun and to devote my life to meditation. What? How dare me? <laughs> All of you, leave us. And in front of the others, you will marry. My dear son, what are you saying? Why will you not marry? I will do as you command. If, as a result, the three troubles of the world are prevented. What do you mean, the three troubles of the world? The first trouble is that when people are young, their face is as fair as a jade moon. But with old age, their hair turns white, their faces wrinkle, and they become worse off than when they were young. The second trouble is that a person's body may be fit and healthy, but should illness strike, she will collapse into bed, taking no pleasure in anything. The third trouble is that someone may have a host of friends and relatives. They might love him with all of their hearts. Then comes the day of death, and suddenly, he is gone, and no tears can bring him back. So, if being married can heal these troubles, then I will marry. If not, then I ask permission to retire to a life of meditation and devotion. You, you were the last to be born. You were my last hope for a son, a prince, and you failed me at birth. Now the least you can do is marry a prince. Do not fail me again. Leave my sight and do not return. You will remain in your quarters until you change your mind. Thank you. That will be all. Son, I would like to have a word with you. Yes? Child, I beg you to reconsider your decision not to marry. Do not refuse your father's wishes. Dear mother, you know I love you and father. 
I want to respect your wishes, yet my love for Lord Buddha is still greater. I must obey my heart. Please, let me join the nunnery. Why? Why must you turn your back on the world? Surely you can meditate and pray and still get married. Try and be reasonable. We have chosen a good man as your husband. He is a prince, and I hear he is very kind. If I marry, my husband may not wish for me to meditate. <sighs> my dear son, there are many ways to get around your husband's wishes, or to change them, or to change them all together. Who knows, you may even have him meditating one day. Then mother, if I must marry, I can only marry a doctor. A doctor? What sort of prince would such a person make? How could he rule? Why a doctor, for goodness sake? My desire is to heal the world of all its ills, of the chills of winter and of the heat of summer, of the fires of desire and of the damp of old age, of all sickness. If I can marry a man who will help me in this, then I will marry tomorrow. Otherwise, I must go to the nunnery. In any case, surely you can live a balanced life, with one foot in heaven and one on earth. He who stands with a foot in two boats may fall between them and drown. I must be true to my soul's call. But your father is so upset. You know how stubborn he can be. I don't know what he'll do if you disobey him. I know that it won't be good. Shh! I am sorry, Mother. Please, forgive me for not obeying your wishes. Like the beautiful undying crane that breaks free, you can slip the bars of your cage and journey on through. North, south, east, and west, nothing is obstructing you. The Chun, the wise one, can rise to the highest night heaven. Too well, Your Majesty. Mm, true. But then again, she may not. Summon Princess Sa. Yes, sire. I have an idea of how to help her see the light. Yes, Father King? Leave us. Well, son, what do you have to say for yourself? Will you marry? If by marrying, I can make all people equal, regardless of position. If by marrying, I can make all things be shared, so that no one goes without or has more than he needs, then I will marry. If not, then I must go to the nunnery. More nonsense. All that time in your room hasn't bred in you any humility? Ah oh, well, no matter. Your mother and I have decided to grant your request. You mean? You may go to the nunnery. Thank you, Father King. There, there now. Get up, get up. Thank you, Father King. Thank you. You're welcome. You may leave tomorrow if you like. Go with your mother to prepare your things. Thank you, Father King. You will not regret this. But you will.
Don't give your ears to intrigue and scandal. Spend your time chanting to the Buddha of release. If you give credence to these sillinesses, you are like a man trying to feed off pictures of cake. Send me 
fetch the princess. There's a messenger here from the king. What does he want, I wonder? I know what he wants. Tell us. When the princess arrived, Abbas told me about the king's letter. He said, we must make life so difficult for Miyashan that she will be forced to return to the palace and marry. He said that if she does not return, he will cut off all our supplies. What? The messenger must be here to ask her if she will return. I must find her at once. This is awful. How can the king be so cruel to us? The princess will never return willingly. You see how devoted she is. And she manages to get all her chores done. I've seen the animals helping her. Now you listen to us. You are not welcome here. You never were. Your father is going to cut off all our supplies. If you do not return, this is messenger. Then wait. I will not wait. The princess must get out of here right now. Or we will all suffer. So back to your palace.
be put to death? Get along with it! Executioner! Father, please don't do this! For your own sake! Proceed with the execution! Like a bird whose nest is flown. 
Because although I give them rice and vegetables, they give me more. The Buddhist monks can chant for me so that no disasters befall me. The Taoist monks can teach me methods of prolonging life. But you? What can I get in return for helping you? If your compassion and charity are sincere, you will give without expecting anything in return. Does a true mother feed her children only if they work for her? If you expect something out of what you give, then it's not true charity. All the time, your charitable deeds are either a show for others or an investment of long life and prosperity. Let's go. Why, I... Can you believe that? I cannot. I have never seen greater insolence in a beggar. And I have never seen greater wisdom. What? Thank you for your generous offer, Mother Wong. I think I shall seek food and shelter elsewhere. to give thanks for his good fortune. When I asked her to heal us, she said to thank the gods in heaven for our good fortune. Then that is what we should do, Lee. You're blind and I'm going blind. What's so good about that? The wisdom of the sages is beyond our understanding. Besides, it is not often immediately apparent whether something is good or bad. You're crazy. I... Yes? Our island of Potala is going to attack the state of Chu. By order of King Quan Chung, all able-bodied males are hereby conscripted into the army. Get your father. Let's go. But sir, my father is blind. And my son is blind in one eye. Which eye? My left. Ha! Hmm. You must be blind. They're no use to us. Let's go. <laughs> 
Do you see a good fortune now, my son? Yes, Father, I do. Thank you, merciful one. And so can I. Thank you, Lord of Heaven. If a child forgets its mother, will she coldly turn away? Wise or foolish, we're your children. Hide us, mother, if we stray. on your life. Therefore, a better strategy would be one in which people would not dare to strike you at all. Hmm, well, that's true, I guess. But just because people do not dare to harm you, there's no guarantee that they will not wish to harm you. Therefore, an even better strategy is one that will make people not want to harm you at all. I see what you mean. But just because people do not want to harm you, that does not mean that they will respect you or love you. Suppose you had a strategy that could get them to love you and respect you, so that your concerns are their concerns. Would this strategy be several times better than just strength and courage? This is exactly what I'm looking for. <coughs> Buddha never became a king, nor did he hold a political office. However, people gave him respect equal to that of kings and nobles. Everywhere he went, people craned their necks and stood on tiptoes just to catch a glimpse of him. Everyone respected him and wished him well. Your Majesty, you already hold political and military power. If you ruled your people with virtue and integrity, wouldn't your greatness surpass that of the Buddha? Now here's the minister who knows how to talk. She's completely turned me around with her arguments. One day, a man will chisel it free. 
into the daylight. So be calm. You know it's been there. I 
shall have to part with my kingdom one day. Lung Shu shares my feelings. Why do you laugh instead? If everyone lived forever, then the ancient kings would still be occupying the throne. You, my lord, would be a peasant, plowing the fields and worrying about whether you would have enough to eat. Given that, you would probably want to die and not live forever. Today you are the king of a prosperous country, and yet you cry like one who is afraid of dying. Seeing a fool urged on by another fool, I cannot help but laugh. <laughs> yet, Sue, you wound me with your words. In my younger days I would have killed you, yet I know you are right. You have always tried to advise me with your wisdom. What is it, my page? Your Majesty, a monk has arrived at the palace. He says he knows a cure for your disease. Send him in. Speak, wise monk. Greetings, King Miao. I have heard of your illness. I have a divine remedy that will heal your majesty. What medicine is it? Do you have it with you? No, but if you take the arm and the eye of one who is without anger and combine them into medicine and apply it, you will be cured. What? <laughs> That's awful. Where could I find a person willing to sacrifice their arms and eyes for someone like me? On the island of Potala, there is such a person. She is an immortal whose devotion to Lord Buddha has brought her to a state of perfection. She has no anger and will respond to your request. Really? Th that's wonderful. Come send. Yes, Your Majesty. Go to the island of Potala. Find the immortal who resides there and beg her for the strange ingredients for this prescription. Leave at once. Yes, sire. This is not the moment for a long face or frown. Throw your fears out of your mind and let the joy in. It's like finding a piece of jade in the middle of a dung heap. The workman stands and wipes it off in one. Heal their wounds, ma, soothe their sorrows. You, the mother of us all. How may I help you? O oh, wise immortal one, I bring a message from King Miao Zhang from the land of Hsing Lin. Please continue. His majesty is cursed with a dreadful disease. Sores cover his body and he cannot sleep. His majesty has found a cure for this malady, but it requires an eye and an arm from one who is without anger. <coughs> his majesty asks, he asks if you will help him. I know this king. He has shown disrespect for the Buddhist faith. He has attempted to suppress the truth. And he has tried to murder innocent nuns. His actions deserve retribution. Tell the king to turn from his evil ways and embrace the true path. <coughs> now, I ask for your help. Anything. How may I serve? Please draw your sword. Assist me. Are you sure? Yes. sorrows. Kuan Yin's miraculous perception enables her to purge them all. Kong Zen, do you have the ingredients? Yes, please take them. Kong Zen, did you 
find the immortal? Yes. And did she? Yes, I gave the items to the mother. Good. <coughs> Excellent. I wonder how long it will take him. Oh. You are here. Your Majesty, I have prepared a broth for you to drink. <coughs> Father's love, I have repaid him with both eyes and both arms. Love? I am an evil wretch. What love have I shown? Look, all of you, at the terrible suffering I have caused my daughter. Father, I have suffered no pain. Having given up these human eyes, I shall see with divine eyes in all directions. Having yielded up these two mortal arms, I shall receive a thousand arms to embrace all those who suffer in this world. If my vow is true, all this will follow.
All your children, mother, call you, knowing not it's you they call. Some through mists of their unknowing, bruised and hurting when they fall. Turn away, but who can leave you? You, the mother of us all. If a child forgets its mother, will she coldly turn away? Wise or foolish, we're your children. Guide us, mother, if we stray. Those whose hearts are torn with anguish lack the power your name to call. Heal their wounds, Ma, soothe their sorrows. You, the mother of us all. Not here. My friends, it is obvious that I cannot be with you at all times, but it is also clear that you need me to watch over you in some way. Please come here. You can help me. I cannot be with you at all times, but my friend the Peacock can. Each of his eyes will watch over you, guard you, and tell me what is happening in the world. When you see his hundred eyes, you will know that I care for all of you. Let the peacock be my servant in this world, and know that I look after you.
We know that this evening's performance wouldn't be possible without the people that I'm going to thank now. I probably won't be able to mention everybody's name that's been involved, but I will do my darndest. For Dharmaraj Ayer for the script writing and cinematography. Rebecca Yang for helping us come to be as authentic as possible within our script, one of the mothers of the children. And for the drum and cymbals and the lion from Gilbert. I'd like to thank Tina for the costumes and her main helpers, Susan, Cindy, and Jayati. Um, Robert Bush for the set. Kieran Desai and Claire Mahoney for the sound. Joe Begley for singing for us. Thank you, Joe. Robert for helping so wonderfully with the percussion. Of course, Ghislaine did that as well. For, um, where are we? Sorry. The Lights with Lawrence Bird. Thank you so much, Lawrence. Andre Rez for the Tiger Dance. And then for the Creative Collaborators, which includes Marguerite for dancing for the choreography and all the teachers of Living Wisdom School which without them it would not be possible to do this production at all. <laughs> Zachary wants me to thank Gilbert who donated the lion costume and taught them the lion dance and the rhythm and percussion for that. And there's one last person who remains to be thanked. He's come here faithfully for the last six weeks, worked with the children with patience, encouragement, shared his expertise, and brought the acting to a new level, Matthew Sloan. And it wouldn't have been possible without the teachers and the children. They were magnificent this year. Thank you so much.